What exactly is going on with those little bumps under your eyes? Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be going over some common reasons why you might have little bumps under your eyes. There are many different types of bumps that can appear under the eyes, on the upper eyelid, even along the eyelid margin. Some of these bumps look like other types of bumps and it can be really confusing to know what exactly it is you are dealing with. Number one is what people will describe as plucked chicken skin under the eyes. Basically exactly what it sounds like. If you take a chicken, you pull out all of its feathers and you look at its skin, you see these little bumps where the feather used to be, well, your under eye area can kind of start to look like that. And it's actually perfectly normal. There's nothing wrong here. Really what you're seeing with your eyes is just prominence of the underlying sebaceous gland. You see the skin under the eyes is quite thin, it's quite delicate. And with age, cumulative lifetime sun exposure, the skin under eyes can thin even more. Then of course you have a variety of age-related anatomical changes around the eyes that can lead to the appearance of under eye hollows. And along with that, you may know more prominent appearing little bumps in the form of quote unquote chicken skin. Now check out my video on how to get rid of chicken skin under the eyes. I give a lot of practical tips. I also go over potential cosmetic remedies for improving the appearance of these, but do know they are perfectly normal. Number two, along the lines of oil glands under the skin is something a little bit different. It's called sebaceous hyperplasia. Basically those little oil glands, a couple of them might get a little bit too happy one day and grow a little bit too much. And what that can lead to are these firm yellowish bumps that almost have a little uh, divot in the center, a dell. Now sebaceous hyperplasia can happen of course under the eyes, but it can happen really anywhere like your forehead. While sebaceous hyperplasia it, in and of itself is a completely benign condition, it doesn't necessarily need to be treated. In some cases it can occur alongside um, certain genetic conditions um, where there are more things going on, but that is rare in and of itself. Also, it's important to verify that that is what you are dealing with because there are other skin conditions that look an awful lot like sebaceous hyperplasia. Now, how do you get rid of sebaceous hyperplasia? Well, there are a variety of different um, procedures that can improve the appearance of them, get rid of them, things like electrosurgery, uh, different laser treatments, Check out my video on how to get rid of sebaceous hyperplasia. I do a deep dive on all of the different types of treatments in that video. Number three is very unique in the way that it appears and it is a little cyst called a hydrocystoma. Now it's basically a cyst that forms within the sweat glands, the eccrine sweat glands. You can also have a similar type of cyst that forms from another gland, the apocrine sweat gland. Hydrocystomas almost look like a little soft, globe and they're very flaccid. Depending on the type of hydrocystoma, it can appear bluish. Those usually happen on the eyelid margin or it can appear sort of brownish. Uh, those typically occur under the eyes. Now hydrocystomas are a little cyst. Um, the ones that happen under the eyes and are sort of brownish come about from the eccrine sweat gland. Some people have many of these and sometimes that is observed in association with Graves' disease. It's also observed in association with Parkinson's disease. Now, if you have one of these little cysts, do not freak out. It is not an indication that you have these conditions, but just know that people who have these conditions sometimes have a lot of hydrocystomas. Now, um, one thing about them is they oftentimes will increase in size and number in hot, humid conditions. So if you deal with these, you want to avoid hot, humid climate it's hot, humid weather, stay in the air conditioning, try and stay cool. Um, that's oftentimes easier said than done depending on where you live, but that is a suggestion. They're not dangerous. They don't necessarily need to be treated, but a lot of people want them treated because they're bothered by the way they appear. Now this is a little cyst, so you can't just pop it and expect it to go away. I don't suggest doing that. It can lead to infection and scarring. And the reason why that is not enough to get rid of them is, well, it is a little cystic structure and so it has a wall and it will just sort of reform. Um, so there are treatments such as excising it or treating it with electrosurgery that can be very effective for getting rid of them. Number four are these little yellow firm bumps, syringomas. These are little benign, meaning not cancerous tumors of the sweat gland. They often appear for the first time in adolescence and can persist throughout adulthood. For whatever reason, they're a lot more common in Japanese people. They're also more common in women compared to men. They're usually anywhere from one to three millimeters in diameter. 
And while these are non dangerous, again, they are a benign, meaning non cancerous tumor. They don't spread anywhere, they don't grow to a very large size. A lot of people want them treated for cosmetic reasons, like they bother people. Um, there's not a cream or anything that you can buy in the store that will get rid of them. Uh, it doesn't exist. In order to get rid of them, you have to see a board certified dermatologist, and there are very simple interventions to treat them, such as electrosurgery, which honestly is a common theme throughout this video, as it is very useful for treating a variety of little bumps. Okay, um, also there are certain lasers that can help get rid of them. One thing about treating serangomas is you do have to be careful. There is a risk of hyperpigmentation or hypopigmentation. Also, there's of course a risk of scarring. And unfortunately, while you can treat them, clear them up, you can't do anything to prevent them from coming back or to prevent you from getting more of them. There is no preventative treatment for serangoma. Number five, you can develop skin tags under the eyes or along the eyelid margin. Now, skin tags are another benign, meaning non-cancerous little skin growth. And and they often occur under the arms, the sides of the neck, in the skin folds areas under a lot of repeat friction. And there is some association with the development of skin tags, especially numerous skin tags and underlying insulin resistance. Also people who have uh, PCOS, people who have other signs of insulin resistance like acanthosis nigricans can also develop them. Now the thing about skin tags is like many of these other things, we can treat them in the office very easily easily. Don't suggest trying to treat them yourself at home, especially around the eyes, because there is a risk of infection, scarring, bleeding. Um, they oftentimes can have a prominent blood vessel in them. So if you try and cut them off, then that blood vessel can really just boom, ooze and ooze and ooze. But uh, the other reason I do not suggest trying to treat your own skin tags is that I have seen several cases, um, and this is reported in the medical literature, of skin cancers appearing in skin tags or people mistaking um, a skin cancer for a skin tag. So for that reason, you want to make sure that what you're dealing with is actually a skin tag. And the over-the-counter skin tag removal de devices, tools, treatments, whatever, they are not evidence-based. And the FDA has even issued a warning against manufacturers of these because they mislead the public. Number next is something called xanthelasma. Xanthelasma start out as little small bumps and they kind of gradually expand in size. They often appear under both eyes as well as the upper eyelid. They're yellowish in appearance and these appear in people who have an underlying problem with the lipids in their blood, whether it be related to your diet or some people have a hereditary problem with the blood lipids. So for example, if a young child developed a lot of these out of the blue, it would warrant further investigation for one of these hereditary conditions. They can be seen in patients who have diabetes as well as patients who have thyroid disorder. They're not dangerous themselves, but like many of these other things, they bother patients cosmetically. Now, first and foremost is to address any underlying problem with the blood lipids because, you know, that is something that can take a significant toll on your health in many aspects. So that is definitely something that warrants attention, addressing that issue. That is through lifestyle modifications, as well as in some cases, uh, lipid lowering medications may be necessary. But here's the thing, once you address that, the xanthelasma that, it, that you have, they don't go away. They don't spontaneously resolve. They tend to persist. So what can be done to get rid of them? <laughs> Electrosurgery. But in some cases, they're really big and they kind of go a little deep. So they may need to be excised with surgery. All right, the next one is one I think a lot of people assume they have. Uh, it's milia. Milia are little firm white cysts filled with keratin, the abundant protein in the outermost layer of your skin. I always get comments, please suggest just eye creams that will not cause milia. There's no such thing as a list of eye creams that will not cause milia, but 
there's really no uh, confirmed association with using any type of eye cream moisturizer around the eyes, triggering milia. Theoretically, there's some idea that perhaps it could clog pores and trigger milia formation, but what we know about how milia form and why they form, it really does not add up. And I think a lot of times different moisturizers, skincare products used around the eyes are simply guilty by association. What we do know is that milia can happen along with certain underlying genetic conditions, it also can happen anywhere where you have any sort of injury to the skin. As an adverse side effect from dermabrasion, it can be seen. Also, if you've had a lot of sun damage, sunburn, the skin can be left more vulnerable. Um, prolonged use of topical corticosteroids can thin the deeper layers of the skin and lead to milia formation. Milia are also very common in young babies and they are totally benign, meaning not cancerous, and they resolve in babies. Milia oftentimes spontaneously resolve, although that doesn't mean you won't get more of them, especially if you have skin that has been injured previously, it may be more vulnerable to developing them. Now, what can be done to get rid of them? There's not really a cream or a lotion or anything of that sort that will get rid of them quickly. There is uh, some thought that using a topical retinoid may help in hastening their clearance. Um, but sometimes people find that retinoids around the eyes are too irritating, so just keep that in mind. There are also some simple interventions your dermatologist can do to remove them. They can be unroofed and um, expressed, and they will go away. Again, that's not to say that they won't come back or you won't get more of them. Milia have this sort of firm, white, pearly appearance. A lot of times, closed comedones are mistaken for milia. Number eight looks like several other bumps, easily confused with some of these other things we've talked about. It's a little bump caused by a virus called the molluscum virus. These little bumps are sort of yellowish, white, firm, and they are umbilicated, meaning they have a little central dell to them, kind of like your belly button. And these can appear under the eyes, anywhere on the face. They are caused by a molluscum virus that gets into the little skin cracks. If you are dealing with these, I suggest um, moisturizing the skin to prevent them from spreading. And otherwise healthy people, they typically resolve spontaneously. There are several interventions to hasten the clearance of them. They can be rather annoying to deal with for patients because one will clear up and you will get others down the road and it can take a long time to clear them all up. They're really common in your young children. They are spread from skin on skin contact. Again, really frustrating to deal with. Check out my video all about molluscum. If this is something you are dealing with because I go into detail about how to treat it and what you might expect from treatments offered in a doctor's office. Speaking of things caused by viruses, another bump caused by a virus that gets into the skin is is warts. You can develop little flat warts under the eyes, often skin colored, brownish, and they kind of look like, well, honestly, a lot of these other things we've talked about. And similar to molluscum, they get into, the little virus gets into the skin via cracks. So people who have dry skin or eczema are more predisposed. Moisturizing is key to reduce their spread to neighboring areas of the skin. They take a long time to go away. And honestly, many of the similar approaches to treating molluscum are also oftentimes pursued for flat warts. Now, as far as skincare products, uh, nothing Will necessarily get rid of them, uh, but topical retinoids may hasten the clearance of them, again, with the caveat that they can be more irritating to the delicate eyelid skin. Also, uh, salicylic acid. Now, salicylic acid is a uh, exfoliant, but it has uh, anti-inflammatory properties, and at high, high strengths, it's actually what you find in over-the-counter wart treatments meant for, like, warts on your hand, on your feet. I don't suggest using those over-the-counter wart treatments treatments under the eyelid skin because whoosh, they are much too strong for delicate eyelid skin, but instead you could use a facial product with salicylic acid, and if you tolerate it, it may help in hastening the clearance, such as a salicylic acid acne wash may help washing your face. Again, can be drying, just keep that in mind. Next is these little brown soft uh, bumps that happen primarily in people um, with medium to deep skin tones, people of African descent, 
are more likely to get these. They are called Dermatosis papulosa nigra. They're actually um, a variant of another bump that I, I guess could appear under the eyes, but often appears like on the torso. It's called a seborrheic keratosis. But basically these are just little benign growths, but they're not dangerous and they can be removed by things like, well, again, electro surgery. I have a video all about DPN as they're called for shorthand, Dermatosis papulosa nigra. So check that out if that's something that you deal with. They can happen on the cheeks, um, the sides of the face. Um, so they're, they're pretty common. They're not dangerous though, and if they don't bother you, you don't necessarily have to treat them. All right, and then last but certainly not least is you can develop a skin cancer under the eyes. And I would say one of the more common skin cancers under the eyes that can fool people because it kind of looks like a lot of these other things is basal cell carcinoma. Basal cell carcinoma, you can have this firm bump. Again, oftentimes that has that little central del to it. Sometimes it's got an overlying uh, blood vessel called a telangiectasia. And it looks, it honestly can look like syringoma. It can look like um, a um, molluscum. So like I said, it can fool people. It becomes more common to develop basal cell carcinoma as you get older. Um, something that's more common in people who have a paler skin type, gotten a lot of cumulative sun exposure throughout their lifetime. Um, and it needs to be treated. People don't die from basal cell carcinoma. While it's a skin cancer and cancer sounds really scary, basal cell carcinoma is not something that in the vast majority of cases is life-threatening. There are rare circumstances where basal cell carcinoma can be you know, more of a, of a concern to someone's overall health. But basal cell carcinoma will grow slowly. It puts out these little roots and therefore with time, it can become a lot more difficult to uh, remove. Around the eye area, these are treated with a special type of skin surgery called Mohs surgery to ensure that the tumor is removed. Check out my video on basal cell carcinoma. I go over more warning signs, but it definitely can happen under the eye and look, like I said, like a lot of these other bumps. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.